So the first job I had, I don't know if it's a job, it's like not, no, the best, I would say task, but job I got paid. But uh, the time period, it was right after I got over undergraduate school, right before I went to graduate school for playwriting. I had this job. Now, the thing is, um, it was delivering newspapers in the morning. I was going to school in um, Piscataway, New Jersey. Well, I graduated from there, but I was, where was I living at the time? Um, I was living, I was living, still living, I was living in Piscataway, New Jersey. Um, but I, my route, my paper route, took me to, uh, and that's, that's in New Brunswick, or Piscataway is next to New, New, New Brunswick, but my paper route was in East Brunswick, and it was, uh, it was a car, I had a car, Karina. Uh, you know, it was a Karina only came, for, came out for about two years. This car was so good that when someone told me uh, in Cape Town, well, in Cape Town they told me, he used to be a mechanic, he said, oh, those, you had one of those cars, those cars? Man, when, when those cars went off the lot, we said, oh, we'd never see them again because you can maintain a car and everything like that. It had a, it had a bell-shaped housing for, for the engine where your spark clothes were. It was like, I think, um, the, the, I think the Jaguar has the same kind of, kind of thing. Anyway, it's put up by Toyota. Somewhere it was really good. Only exists for two years, like two, 2000, well, 19, 1973 and 74, I think that's, that's, that's what it is. But they discontinued because it was so good, right? Anyway, I would deliver newspapers. Now, the papers that we delivered was the New York Times, the um, Wall Street Journal, and the Daily News. It was all out of, out of New York. Um, and then also, once a week, we, they, they would have uh, the Village Voice, some customers got there. And, one of, the, one, of the, one of the many things I learned from that job is if you do something repetitively, you get really good at it. Like, you know, I've been driving, we drive on the, you know, on this side, on the left side of the thing, at the right side, like here in South Africa. Anyway, so, you know, I could take, you know, newspapers all packed up, you know, stacked up, you have a rubber band around it. I could take a newspaper and drive, and the house would be way over there. I could fling like that and hit the porch, you know, hit. Hit what I was able to hit, decide like that. It was really interesting, you know. I mean, that's what I learned from there. Uh, but also, uh, what, what the job uh, did did for me, because I had to wake up at like four o'clock in the morning and make them start at four thirty. Anyway, I got so good at it that it only took me like an hour and a half to, to, to deliver my whole route. Where when I first started, it took like three hours, three and a half hours to do it. Anyway, one of the things I I, I uh, was grateful for that job was that I would finished in such a time that I could, like, say on Monday, on Mondays I could read the New York Times. Not all of it, of course, but, you know, the major articles in the New York Times. The New York Times, not the New York Times, take that back, the Wall Street Journal. The Wall Street Journal back then, when they had articles, they were long, you know, it would, it, the jump would be at another page, and they would, they would have very, very long articles, very in-depth things. So the same article, it's the same topics that I would read on a Monday. On a Friday, the same topic would come out in the New York Times, but it would be, for lack of, I won't say dumbed down, it would be dumbed down, you know, you know, it would be shorter, like that. And then on Saturday, that same topic would be in the Daily News, it's more like a tabloid paper, uh, and it would be further dumbed down. So if you read something on Monday, you know, and you, you'd have the information about, you know, you'd have more information than you'd ever need. So that's what I learned, that's, that's one of the things I learned about about newspapers, about journalism, but then again, my undergrad degrees in journalism, whatever it is. But what I do here in South Africa, in the, in the, in the, especially in the, in the mornings, what I do is I get my little device, right? And I just read the headlines, you know? Like here, Black Panther remains the top box office after you know five weeks or whatever it is, right? Like that. Then they have, uh, uh, who is Zimbabwe's biggest looter? <laughs> and then, you know, the, the new president of Zimbabwe names, names some names, I guess like that. But here you have, uh, like here, uh, Undertakers raise money to pay Zuma's legal fees. Woo, Undertakers, that's a strange term. Raise money to pay Zuma's legal fees. <laughs> uh, do not fear when the funeral Undertaker is here, the National Football Union they go into there, uh, like that. So that's one of the, the things that, that I found out uh, uh, from reading the headline. Remember, this is headline reading. This is not like uh, it's not like real news reading. If you read the headlines, you're not going to get any place. Governments pay 1.2 million uh, rand to life and some, some families like hysteria. We got some disease breakout over in the, over in the, well, way, way over in Hautang, whatever it is, uh, ordered by Joe Berg, and, and I think it comes from Madagascar. All right. Court orders Gupta's jet to be grounded. Okay. Zuma to put ANC on trial. Oh, that's a nice headline. Not a nice, but it's a, by then they have, I am broke, says Robert Mugabe. Now this is, 
hilarious to me. You know, but we have the, Zuma is going to put the ANC on trial. He's no, that's 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 funny. I would like to read. I, I wouldn't like to read more of that because it's just you never get to the bottom of that particular story. But the other one's kind of interesting. I am broke, says Robert Mugabe. That's pretty interesting because I insist that both Zuma and Mugabe, the ex-president of South Africa, the ex-president of Zimbabwe, are both messing with people. They're just having a ball. You know, they have no, they don't have to do any governmental things. All they have to do is mess with people. <laughs> I'm sorry, to me it's just pretty funny. But anyway, so, 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 so that's on, on, that, on that score. But what's interesting to me is the uh, economic freedom uh, fighters. Uh, when that party first came out, uh, believe it or not, it, you know, because they have a Jewish Malema who's like, a, I'm going to say, a, well, he's an instigator, let's put it that way. Uh, and he basically instigated so that uh, the country uh, politically would, they would go into the right real quick, you know, to right of the spectrum real quick. So he sort of pulled them back from that precipice. And then the ANC started to, you know, do things that, uh, that Malema was saying because it got on the people's, you know, the people were conscious, they got on the people's mind, you know, they, they say, yeah, what about that? So his, 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 he did a very effective thing uh, with, with that move. And then the next thing um, that, that I realized with, with, um, just this year, I guess that ran out of steam. So he's asking for, or he's, he's saying, just like in Zimbabwe, that we should uh, take the land back. Oh, now that's a big thing of contention. What's really funny with that is because the EFF is advocating for taking the land back, but now the ANC has to be swayed and they gotta go to taking the land back. That's now their, their platform. A long time ago I asked on this camera, so what is the economic freedom fighters of uh, economic policy? And nobody could come up with one. But lo and behold, now when they hit this next thing they do, do it right now, remember they had the land thing. Uh, but now they're dealing with banking, banking specifically, there's this scheme out there, I don't know the detail. I just caught wind of it. Uh, I just saw one article on it. I think, and I, I really didn't pay attention because I got other things to do. Um, but it has to do with banking. Now, basically, just recently, last within the last uh, couple of months, uh, the only black-owned African bank shut down. At least in South Africa, it's shut down. It's no, no more. They can't make. It's no more, right? And so the EFF, the Economic Freedom Fighters, this party that heads head by Jewish Lema, anyway, their deputy uh, vice president, they came up with this plan where they basically, because the post office has sort of a banking situation, but it's not a full-fledged bank, but they came up with this plan, well, to make the bank, the post office, the, the post office a bank, you know, so they won't be holding to the, uh, to the uh, I guess they won't be holding um, to the, I don't want to say the fiat, but to the, um, to the central bank, or somehow there's a, it'll be a government-run bank. Let's put it that way. Which is a well, asset economic program, and it reminds me of something that Bernie Sanders said in the last campaign. Why not take the uh, post office, the United States Postal Office, and make them banks? You see. So this is quite interesting because the po because first of all, the post office, the infrastructure is there. The post office exists in every little hamlet, every place you can get to a post office. You know. Uh, the, the banks are there just to rip your money off or whatever, I won't get into that. So it's a quite an interesting thing. So it'll be interesting if, if, um, if South Africa goes that way or if the, if the EFF forces the ANC to take up that position and they, then they have this banking situation out of the post office, of course they will have service problems because even if you go online the post office right now, they have all these windows but only two or three people at the window, they have like 15 windows but only, you know how it is. So maybe they'll, this will encourage, I mean, Maybe they'll have some good, some services, I don't know. But if that happens here in South Africa, then perhaps that whole idea will spread in the United States. Finally, instead of South Africa waiting for the, the Northern Hemisphere or the West to do something, maybe we'll be doing something, when I say we, I mean here in South Africa, then that, 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 uh, that can be emulated, you know, someplace else. Just a thought for me, T from the Patterson, taking a train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect.